Hi, welcome to Amber Unabridged. I'm Amber and I have decided that since I'm terrible at actually posting wrap ups on time and TBRs sometimes and general updates and stuff, I've decided to just do sort of a catch all like weekly or bi weekly update type thing. So I figure I would kind of very quickly run through the books I read in March, in April, and what I've read so far in May now, and um, kind of my May TBR as well. I think I do have um, TBR videos for March and April. So if you're interested in those, you can check them out. I'll leave links down below. Um, otherwise, it's really just going to be like a I read this, I read this, I read this, maybe a few thoughts. Um, I'm also thinking that since I already <laughs> filmed, um, I already filmed a, a couple haul videos for books that I got in March. So I'll probably post those just hella late. And I'm thinking I might do the same. I might just do like a April and May so far um, haul update type thing. But going forward, after I kind of do all this catch up, I would like to try to just do sort of a catch all type video. So it'll be it'll be um, what I'm currently reading, what I'm intending to read, what I've been reading, what I've acquired, uh, what I've unhauled maybe, you know, who knows. Uh, I feel like it'll be easier for me to stay on top of updating everybody on what is going on in my bookish life. And um, I feel like I'll be able to kind of share more of my thoughts about things as I go. Hopefully that will allow me the ability to do more reviews, more short story Sunday videos, all of that kind of fun stuff. A few more tags, all that jazz. Okay, so in March I read four books and a handful of short stories. So I'm going to cover those. One of the books is also a short story. It's like independently like bound. like a cat hair just floating in the air right in front of the camera. Um, so the first book that I finished in March was The Hole by Hiroko Oyamada uh, and it was translated by David Boyd. This was a really interesting book. I had a lot of thoughts about it. I really enjoyed reading it. I buddy read this with Sam over at Sarcasm and Sci-Fi and Sue over at Spinebreakers. I uh, invited them to read it with me because it was kind of it sort of presents itself as a sort of Japanese Alice in Wonderland retelling of sorts, or that it has Alice in Wonderland vibes. I didn't really get that impression from it, but I did really enjoy the story quite a lot. The next book that I read was Helena and the Beast by Justin Richards. This is part of a Doctor Who uh, short story collection. It's like a little box set with all these tiny little books, and I'm obsessed with tiny books. I I just, I can't help it. I don't know why. I just, I love mini things and books. And so I had no hope to begin with. <laughs> so I read this. It was, it was fun. It was um, a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And I really liked it. I like Beauty and the Beast retellings. They're fun. Haven't encountered one yet that I've like actively disliked. Haven't read that many, but yeah. The next book that I read in March was I Love You So Mochi by Sarah Kuhn. I fucking love this. It was so cute. And I read it in a day, basically. I'd gotten it. Uh, I'd ordered it. It came in the mail. I started reading it by accident. I was just trying to read the first like couple lines to catch a vibe. You know, sometimes you just read a couple sentences of a book. And I just didn't stop. And then eventually I had to sleep. And then I had to wake up and work. And then after work the next day, I had to run an errand and then I finished the book. It, I finished it within 24 hours. It was so cute. It's a YA about a Japanese American girl who goes to Japan to like meet her grandparents for the first time in real life and get to spend time with them. She also meets a boy and she also, you know, uses her Japanese heritage to inspire her in her fashion designing um adventures. So it's a good time. Uh, and then the final book 
that I finished reading in March is Nocturnal by Wilder. Um, you'll see this in my March haul. Actually, I love you so much. will be in there too. This is a book of poetry I impulsively picked up at Barnes and Noble. I love it. I absolutely love it. I put little tags on poems that I particularly enjoyed and it's got like really fun, really neat, um, like illustrations throughout as well. Um, just like cute little, it's, oh, it's just beautiful. The art's beautiful. The words are beautiful. Everything's beautiful and I love it. So I want to read more by this poet. Hopefully I'll be able to. And then for March, for short stories, I read six short stories in March. Uh, I'm clearly failing at my goal for reading a short story every day, but uh, you know what you're gonna do. So the short stories that I read were Soulmates by Marion Keys, De-Stress by Joan O'Neill, and The 28th Day by Katherine Berry, which were all from Irish Girls About Town. I really hated De-Stress a whole lot. I made a whole video about it. You should check it out. I'll link that down below. Uh, it was real bad. It was real bad. The other stories, not great. I didn't enjoy them. I um, I don't know that I'll finish the whole collection. I have the physical book. I didn't grab it, but I have the physical book and I just don't want to read more of it. I'll probably just read the Maeve Binchy story that's in there and then probably unhaul it. We'll see. Maybe I'll give it like a couple extra stories, see if it redeems itself. But so far I am thoroughly unimpressed. Um, I also read the uh, Helena and the Beast, which is the Time Lord Fairy Tales book number 11, apparently. And then I read two books from Nalo Hopkinson's Skin Folk anthology collection, which I was reading from an ebook on Scribd, I think, but I canceled my Scribd sub sub subscription. So I... I think I have access to that through like Hoopla or Libby or something because otherwise I probably wouldn't have canceled it until I finished it but I still haven't gone back to it since then. That doesn't matter. Anyway I read Riding the Red and Money Tree by Nalo Hopkinson from that Skin Folk collection. I really enjoyed them. Uh, I, I am very excited to read more from that collection and more from her in general. Going on to April. I read seven books in April, so not too shabby. I was participating in the Colorathon readathon, and so all of the books that I read in April counted towards my goals for that. I also got some bonus points. There was a bookshelf scavenger hunt, which I participated in and got the maximum points, which was like 60. And then there was also a uh, like a, a rainbow book spine challenge, which I guess was my idea, but I, I wasn't thinking of it as so much a competition as just like a, hey, rainbows are great. And that's kind of the whole shtick, um, but it was a competition and apparently I won. So I got a hundred bonus points for my team for that. I was on the white team because it's a very neutral color and I figured that it would be on a lot of my book covers. I wasn't gonna go with black for the same reason, but when I was first looking into the readathon, the host had posted about how there were more people on that team than any other team. So I wanted to kind of share the love a little, which I think I said in my TBR, but I posted that a while ago, so who knows? Okay, so the first book that I finished was Lafcadio Hearn's The Faceless Ghost and Other Macabre Tales from Japan. This is a graphic novel. It is by Sean Michael Wilson, who I think did the adaptation illustrated by Michiru Morikawa. It's basically just a handful of his short stories, most of them from Kwaidan, but there was one or two from other ones. I really love this story. Uh, it's about this guy who's uh, blind and he ends up performing the Biwa for a bunch of ghosts that died in this one epic battle. The Battle of the Heike. Ah, yeah, no, it's just, I love it. I love it so much. I love Quiedon. I've got it. Oof. I've got it here. So this is one of my favorite books ever. It's a collection of short stories. They're Japanese ghost stories, but they're old. And Lafcadio Hearn didn't create them. He just kind of wrote them down for uh, English speaking audiences. So this is just a graphic novel adaptation of some of his stories that he had written down and I love it. It was great. I had a great time. 
Okay, all right, and then the next book that I finished in April was Orange Future by Ichigo Takano. This is sort of a, a kind of prequel or like an alternate, ti alternate timeline kind of that sort of explains what was going on during the events of the Orange manga, which I read previously, like in September and then sometime earlier this year for the two big volumes. They're chonkers. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, I would read more by this author. I loved this story. It's got some timey-wimey stuff. It's all sad, but pretty and happy ending and whatever. So the next book that I finished in April was The Rock from the Sky by John Klassen. I was at Barnes and Noble and I saw it and I love John Klassen because of This Is Not My Hat. It's my favorite book by him. And uh, I saw it and I just, I started reading it and then I didn't stop. So I just read it standing there in Barnes and Noble. I may probably get it as a gift for some child in my life at some point. I don't know that I will go purchase it for myself, but it was delightful and just kind of weird. And I like stories like that. So that was a good time. The next book that I finished, I own, but I don't have my copy because I lent it to a friend. Uh, but it is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I buddy read that with Sam over at Sarcasm and Sci-Fi and I love it. It's a great book. I, uh, it's just so great. <laughs> We're planning to buddy read the rest of the series, uh, hopefully soon. And, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, it's just a great kind of slice of life, kind of space adventure, but it doesn't, it, it's, really accessible for people who don't necessarily gravitate towards sci-fi because it's so character driven. So uh, I really, I really loved it. I don't read a lot of stuff set in space as much. I like sci-fi, but more like alternate reality, earth-based, time travel, mutations, genetic, biology, anything, anything kind of set on earth that's sort of more my sci-fi jam. So, uh, but I really, I really loved that book. So I'm excited to read the rest of them. The next book I finished was Black Sun by Rebecca Rowan Horse. I buddy read this with Unique over at Uniquely Reads and I love it. It's a great story. I, for some reason, wasn't expecting it to be the beginning of a series, but it is. <laughs> And this book is still very new, so I have to wait for the rest of the story, and I'm not thrilled about it. But I loved this book. I couldn't put it down. I mean, I did put it down, but I was working on a lot of things. But when I did pick it up, it just, I was just going. It was, oh, so good. It's kind of a fantasy based on, like, some native kind of, myth, like, myth native like belief systems, I guess, like Native American belief systems. I don't know a lot about the history that inspired it, but I did appreciate the result. The next book that I finished was Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. I actually listened to the audiobook for this. I got through Libby from my library. My copy was dusty, um, I, but I clearly own a physical copy. So this is one of my favorite series from when I was a teenager. And it's about uh, this kind of future world where the, I guess, government of sorts, you get this surgery when you turn 16 to make you pretty. And it's supposed to resolve conflict within society so that there's no more war and infighting and all that jazz. But uh, what people don't know is that there's actually something else going on during surgeries that helps to prevent that um, conflict. It's not so much just the superficial, everybody looks the same now approach. I, I know that's not how I was supposed to word that, but it's been a day. It's been a day. So that's just what we're, that's just what we're going with. I still love it. It's still great. Uh, the next book that I finished was oh, so good. It's Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. A friend of mine wanted, told me about this book a couple years ago. I think right when it came out, she'd read it and she was like, this book is great. You should read it. And I was like, okay. And it was on my radar. And then I just never did <laughs> because that's the story of my life. I always intend to read things and it takes me like several years to do it. So 
I finally read it. It's amazing. I love this book. It's a multi-generational story about a Korean family and living in Korea and then Japan during the Japanese occupation. That's the word. Wow. During the Japanese occupation during World War II. So um, it talks about a lot of the cultural conflicts that transpired during that time that from what I understand are still, there's still ripple effects from that um, today. It's a great story. It It's another kind of slice of life. I really like slice of life stories. And it's just about like surviving, you know, life and, and getting through and stuff. It's just really great storytelling. There is a trigger warning for suicide. So I want to make sure I mention that, but it is a beautiful story overall. I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend. Going on to the short stories that I read in April, I counted pretty much all of the ones in The Faceless Ghost because they were all short stories. So I won't like mention the stories specifically in here, but I did also read a few stories from Sabrina and Karina. It's an ebook short story collection by Kali Fajardo Anstein. And I, I haven't loved any of the stories so far. They're all really good stories. They pull you into the world very efficiently, but I haven't liked any of the endings. They just kind of stop and that irritates the bejesus out of me. So take it as you will. But uh, the stories that I read from that collection so far, or that I read from that collection in April are Sugar Babies, uh, Sabrina and Karina, and Sisters. And those are the only three that I read from that in April. So that's how April's going so far, or, you know, finished. Okay, and then we are caught up to May. Yes. So today is, I think, the 8th? It's Saturday. So I've got some updates for May. Uh, I did not post a May TBR video, but I did post a TBR on Instagram. If you follow the link tree in my uh, description of the video, my Instagram is linked there and you can see it there. But I'll kind of just very quickly go through them here since we're just doing a big catch up thing and that's kind of my whole thing. But also my post was really pretty. It had a paper crane made out of Tokidoki origami paper. So I'm just saying. In May, there is the Asian Readathon. I am participating in that. I love Asian literature. I'm trying to read more diversely, but my primary interests are in Japanese and Korean culture. Uh, if you've spent any time on my channel, you know I talk about Japan a lot. Uh, and I'm trying to also get more into Korean literature as well. So uh, that's kind of, uh, I'm a little heavy on those countries for this month, just for myself. The, the readathon sort of is designed to encourage reading multiple different Asian authors, basically from different countries. So my May TBR, I have a few books that I'll mention. Uh, so the first one is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. I already started reading this, so I'm reading it presently. I am 60 pages in. And I'm enjoying it so far. It's real fucking weird. Yeah, couldn't really tell you exactly what it's about. Um, it seems to be following this kid named Kafka, but that's apparently not his real name. He ran away from home on his 15th birthday and he's just hanging out at this hotel and going to a local library in this other town that he ran away to. And he's spending a whole lot of time reading books and working out at the gym and there's some other stories going on. I don't really understand them. Some old man was talking to a cat. There's some sort of event that took place where a bunch of kids passed out on a hill during World War II. Not sure how they work into it yet, but um, I guess I'll find out. Next book on my TBR is The Tarot Cafe by Sung Sun Park. Uh, she is a Korean author. So I don't uh, really remember what this book is about. And I don't want to spoil it for myself. So I figured I'll just read it. And, um, and that's what, that's what we'll do. Uh, next book. I've been wanting to read this for ages now. It's like 
really, really just grinding my axe that I haven't read it yet. Um, but it's Tokyo Ueno Station by Yumiri. Um, I want to read this so badly. I'm going to read it this month. It's going to happen. I will. It's going to happen. I have to. It's about, I think, this young man who is a ghost and his whole life somehow revolves around the, uh, the train station in Tokyo and his life parallels the emperor's or something. I, I don't know. I don't even, I couldn't even tell you why I'm so drawn to this book. I just, I am. Probably because it's got a pretty cover. I'm a total sucker for that kind of thing. So I need to read it. That's just, that's just where we're at. Uh, the next book on my TBR is The Woman Warrior by Maxine Hong Kingston. This is about a Chinese American woman. So it's, it's a memoir of her and the, the Chinese women who've inspired her, be it women in her personal life or from Chinese myth and memory. So um, it just, it sounds intriguing. I love memoirs and I just, I got it one time. It sounded good and now I'm gonna read it. So the next book that I grabbed is White Chrysanthemum by Mary Lynn Bracht. I'm not sure I said her name right. She, I think, is Asian American. Yeah, I think I think she she's from she has Korean heritage. She was born in the United States, but she's currently living in London. But I grabbed this book because the same friend who recommended Pachinko recommended this one. And it sounded intriguing. It's, it touches a little bit more on Korea during Japanese occupation during World War II. I wanted to kind of um, learn a little bit more about it. Uh, from another perspective, because there's a lot that went on. And so I want to read it. It's about where we're at. The next book on my TBR is The Sympathizer by Viet Thanh Nguyen. I'm real bad at names. I really should just look up how to pronounce everybody's name on the internet before I start filming videos ever. But I don't, because I don't plan for things very well. But I saw this on a list of books by Asian Americans. The author was born in Vietnam and raised in America, but apparently this book is hilarious and I don't really remember all that much else about it. So I'm just, I'm interested, see where it goes, see what happens. And then the next book that I have on my TBR and we'll see how, we'll see how this goes, but it's contemporary Japanese literature edited by Howard Hibbett. Um, so it's an anthology of fiction, film, and other writings since 1945. Uh, I found this collection in Springfield, Missouri when I was visiting Sue and Megan from Spinebreakers. And it's got a bunch of short stories by names that I recognize and a bunch of names that I don't. I'm trying to read more short stories in general. So I thought this would be really fun to check out. It looks like it's got like scenes from famous movies and stuff like that, or from good movies. I don't know if they're famous, but just I'm flipping through and it's like a screenplay or play or something. So some of the names on here that I recognize are Mishima Yukio, Kawabata Yasunari. Uh, I think there was another one, but, um, but yeah, so looking at the back here, it's got a list and it's got stories, film scripts, poetry, and a, and one play. So <laughs> it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm pretty excited to kind of get this diverse collection of Japanese short works. It'll be good. And then for this month so far, I have finished reading uh, Assassination Classroom by uh, Yusei Matsui. I saw this, I think I saw somebody post on Goodreads that they were reading it. And I was like, what's this? The cover is so yellow. And I was intrigued. So I got it from my local library and I read this already. So I finished this and I really enjoyed it. I got the second book from the library as well. So this is on my TBR as well, I guess now, sort of. Uh, <laughs> and then I also read the audiobook for Pretties by Scott Westerfeld. This is the second book in the Uglies series. I still love it. I'm gonna read the next ones. And then he's got like a new series set in the same universe that I've never read. So I'm hoping to get to that in the next few months or whatever. And then theoretically, I would like to keep working on reading these other books I'm currently reading because I enjoy them. Uh, I'm concerned I may end up putting them off because they don't fit within like the Asian readathon for this month. So I might end up 
pushing it back to June, but I'm hoping I can at least get a few pages in for each, but I'm still working on Ireland's Pirate Queen, the true story of Grace O'Malley. She was a badass and I'm really enjoying reading about her story. Although the book is a lot of history about Ireland in the 16th century, which is awesome, but not exactly how I thought the book was going to go. I thought it was going to be more kind of um, narrative than historically based. I'm not so great with like names and dates and places. For me, it's a lot easier for me to follow historical events if it's through a story. So I'm having a little trouble following it just because that's not how my brain is wired, but she's really cool and I want to read the rest of the book. So uh, the other book I'm still working on is 400 Souls, edited by Ibram X. Kendi and Keisha and Lane. I'm holding it up and I don't have the sleeve on it, but um, it's a fantastic book. This is a history of Africans in America and African Americans over the course of 400 years. And each, there are like 40, 30 or 40 authors who have each taken like a five year chunk of time and written about something that happened in history during that time period. And that's what this is. It's a collection of just like historically based events that have happened and the impact that it's had, you know, in the years following, uh, even up through today. So I've been really enjoying it and I would like to read some more. So, and then I've read one short story this month so far, and that was Remedies from the Sabrina and Karina short story collection by Kali Fajardo Anstein. So I want to finish that collection as well. I'm hoping to finish it before the contemporary Japanese literature uh, short story collection, because otherwise I'll just end up keep putting it on the back burner and it'll never get finished. Like some of my other books tend to, and I need to be better about finishing things that I start. So that is my kind of long winded summarized massive update for the last two months and some change. Comment down below with any thoughts on any of the books. If you have any recommendations for me, especially for Asian authors, great because I would love more recommendations. Thanks for watching and happy reading.